you stay with prayers. You guys are having a great morning. You guys, today we're going to talk about slavery. Now, this is one of the ones that I definitely wish we were in the classroom for. For the simple reason, we have many Africans that's in our classes, and I really would like to hear their take on this. So this is one of those sensitive subjects as well. But we're going to dive right in. We're looking at slavery in the 13 colonies. My objective today is to explain slavery in the colonies. Introduction. I want you to go to it at Puzzle. Now, in fifth grade, we have a lot of videos today because I can show you better than I can tell you. The first one I want you to look at is Storytime with Mr. Beat. It's a six minute video. So that's the first video I want you to look at, please. After you go to Ed Puzzle, come back to this video. Hmm. Ask yourself, what did you see in that video? What do you know from the video? And what do you wonder about from the video? And hopefully whatever you wonder, I will have discussed it throughout this lesson video. So these are the key points that I want to focus on today. Slaves represented the bottom of African society. Most slaves were captive of war. Slavery in Africa is not permanent, nor is it hereditary. And assimilation took place the same way it did with the Native Americans. When the first settlers came over, they wanted the Native Americans to assimilate. Assimilation is still rampant in the slave part of the colonies. So let's start at the beginning. Let's look at our true history. Indentured servants, or were they slaves? Hmm. Huh. So indentured servant, things like these notices, they were shipped out to the different, not shipped out, but they were taken out, put out to the different plantations. They had indentured servants in the beginning. This is what happened. The master paid for passage to America. The indentured servant was then had to work five to seven years. And this is what an indentured servant is. It's a deed or an agreement. And this is what it would look like. And remember, everything was written um, by hand when you had the, the signatures. All those were done by hand. They were not computerized. They were all done by hand. So the indentured servant, they had to work for five to seven years. That's how long they were owned in the beginning. Once the indentured servant was paid, their servant became free. So once they put in their time, they did their work, they became free. If they, if, keyword, if they were considered an indentured servant. Initially, the indentured, indentured servants were more desirable than slaves in the beginning. Initially means in the beginning. But keep in mind, though, they had to have this paper or this deed with them at all times to prove that they were not a slave, that they were an indentured servant, meaning they could be free after five to seven years of work. So the first slaves in America were brought to Jamestown. Remember, Jamestown was our first permanent settlement in 1619. And I want you to notice they didn't come walking over onto Jamestown. You notice they were in chains, whether head chain or feet chain or hand chains. They were brought over in chains. So it's not like they were on a cruise ship and they stepped off the cruise ship over to Jamestown. That was not the case. You see, you see how they were brought in. Slavery was institutionalized in many states by 1640, meaning it wasn't just Jamestown anymore. Slavery had started to spread to the other 13 colonies. Slaves were chattel property. Chattel property is all property that was not real estate and not attached to real estate. Real estate is more land. For example, everything from a lease to a cow to a clothes is chattel. Slaves were put in that category. They were considered property, like your purse, your shoes, 
those are considered property your book bags your pencil is your property but that's what slaves would put on the same level as your property so chattel slavery in america it took away all real rights that they had while forms of bondage existed in some of the societies from which africans were captured chattel slavery in which individuals surrendered all rights and became solely the property of owners rarely existed in africa so in the continent where they came from they were not chattel slavery but when they got to america they became chattel slavery slaves were stripped of any real rights stripped means they were taken away from slaves were not permitted to travel without permission from their master they had no right to a family one in three marriages was broken by sale one half of the children were separated from at least one parent meaning when they went to slave auctions very often and more often than none they would take a family and separate them they may leave with one parent or they may not there were times when children was uh auctioned off and they never saw their parents again and it and keep in mind people this was legal there was no freedom of assembly meaning they could not come together as slaves they could not have a meeting they could not assemble we have that right to assemble they didn't have their right to assemble they had a curfew at night meaning they had to be on the plantation at a certain time they couldn't just roam around at night going wherever they wanted to go because they thought they were going to be runaways so they had a curfew at night in most of the states it was illegal to teach the slave to read and write if you was caught teaching a slave to read or write you could be beaten like this man but now think about something how would they how would a slave know how to read or write in the first place because remember they came from africa they did not know english that is a different language unless they learn it in africa and they would come here with some english language but let's think about something how did they mainly learn to read and write they would learn through the school through the students through the children the children in playtime would teach the little African boy or girl or the little slave kids reading and writing. Or the owner would teach them how to read and write because they want them to read the Bible to them. So the white owners and the white children not really understanding or really even thinking about, I'm teaching this slave child or this slave person to read the Bible to me, or I'm playing with this little slave child and by playing with the child i'm teaching that child to read or write so this is how a lot of the slaves learn to read or write when the white slave owner was teaching them to read for a different purpose they in turn would go back and they would teach their parent they would teach their siblings they would teach other people of the slaves how to read or write so this is how a lot of the reading and writing was able to filter down throughout the plantations from the slaves. No right to vote or claim access to any civil liberties, meaning they could not vote, which is why it's very frustrating today in 2020 when we have people who won't go vote because we have slaves who did not have the right to vote. We have the right to vote now and we still don't vote. That's very frustrating, especially Trump being our president, but I digress again. They could not testify against whites in court. Let's say that something happened and that the slave knew it. They couldn't go to court and say, yes, I saw this white person do blah, blah, blah. They could not testify against a white person, which is why the white people knew they could do what they wanted to do because the slaves could not go to court and testify. Rape of an enslaved woman was not generally considered a crime because remember people, the slaves were considered property. I cannot violate my own property. If I do, it's my property. So what? It's my property. So therefore, when the women were raped by the plantation owners, it was not considered rape because that woman was considered what? His property. No slave had a legal right to self-defense. If the slave owner 
did something to a slave, he had to stand there and take it. He could not fight back or she could not fight back. Okay, they didn't have a legal right. There was no stand your ground. There was no self-defense. They had a legal right to do whatever they wanted to do to their slave because their slave was considered their what? Its slave was considered property. Now, what do you think this is on this man's back? It is not a birthmark. These are whip marks. He has been whipped with a rope tied together to make it very, very thick. So he was a former slave from Louisiana who escaped in 1863. So he had been whipped. This is the evidence of a whipping. And did the, the person who whipped him, did he go to jail? That would be no. Because remember, they could not do something against a slave because the slave was considered property. If he fought back, it would get worse, which is why when they whipped their slaves, they tied them up so that they couldn't fight back. Now, the development of slavery in the New World. Now, they used to use the Native American as slave, but that became a problem. Because remember, they first came up in Jamestown. The Native Americans were already here. Okay, so let's make that clear. The Native Americans were already here. They tried using them as slaves, but that was a problem. So they went to Africa. They, they was given money to go to the continent of Africa. They became more cost efficient than trying to use them as indentured, meaning why do I need to let you pay, have them pay to bring you from Africa, come and work for, for five to seven years, give you freedom, and then now what? So they said, no, we're not going to do that anymore. We're not going to make them indentured. We're simply going to make them slaves, where they just have to work and they don't get their freedom. The colonists viewed the blacks as inferior, meaning they feel, made them feel as if they were less than. They didn't see the slaves as human beings. They saw them as property. And the slaves were servants for life. This is why the slave mentality bothers me. These chains was put on a person's body. In 2020, we don't have chains on our bodies anymore. For some of you guys, you have a chain on your brain. You're not allowing yourself to think. You're not allowing yourself to be educated. So you have got to break that mentality the same way the slaves had to break out of these chains. This part gets a little tricky, a little sensitive. It was sad, but unfortunately, this is true. Unfortunately, Africans collaborated, participated in the kidnapping of their own people. The trade could not have been as large as it was without cooperation from other Africans. Think about something. When the white man came over to get the slaves, there were more, slave, there were more blacks on the continent of Africa than the white men that came over. They had to have cooperation from other Africans, unfortunately. It was a tiny minority. It was not everybody. Everyone seemed to get thrown into the same pot, but it was not everybody. It was just a tiny minority of people who actually gave over and cooperated with giving over slaves to the slave catchers. But it's very complex. Some captured other Africans in war and sold them into slavery because they were at war with another tribe. So if you, your tribe is against another tribe, you will say, okay, this is my enemy, so I'm going to give my enemy to another enemy. That was some of the people that actually helped the slave masters to capture other slaves. Number two, the European invaders, they got richer and richer by offering resources and guns and special status to that population. So they were bribed. They were given things that they didn't already have. Autonomy of a slave ship. After they have gotten from Africa on their way to North America, let's take a look at how they were brought here. Because you need to understand they was not brought here in a canoe. They was not brought here in a cruise ship. This is what it looked like. This is the Atlantic slave trade. Why is it Atlantic? Because they traveled over from the Atlantic Ocean. 
you guys, these are people. These are people. This is what it looked like. They were packed from the storeroom to the front of the ship. It is obvious that it's a, it's a very difficult passage. Keep in mind, North America and Africa, they're not next door to each other. It's not like you're running across the street. That is a long boat trip. And if you're on a boat, it's definitely going to be longer. Slaves were kept in these cramped conditions. They were not fed and a lot of diseases became prevalent. The slave, shoe crips, shoe, the slave ship crews lived in fear of revolt. What does that mean, Ms. Lofton? I'm so glad you asked. Look at what you see here. First of all, they were shackled. They were chained. They're, they're, they were not freely able to be, be able to move around. So there were, there were not a lot of the white slave uh, trappers, but you have all of these slaves and most of them were men. So of course they live in fear of revolt because I want to keep in mind something else. These are men, some women and children. But for the most part, these are men. These men had pride about themselves. They were not just going to just lay down and just let you take me and capture me. They had pride about themselves. So yes, the slave owners, the, the people who came to get them, the trappers, they were very afraid of these men. This is how it would look. You would have all of these slaves and then you have a few. So who had more of? There were more slaves than there were the slave captures. So they were very afraid and they should have been afraid. They shouldn't have did it in the first place. But anyway, most Africans resisted enslavement with all of their energy. People, they were not punks. They did not just sit there and say, take me and I'm not gonna do anything about it. Rebellion on slave ships were very common. Many deaths on slave journeys across the Atlantic derived from violence, brawls, which is fights, and rebellion. There were probably at least one insurrection every eight to 10 journey, simply meaning every time they went to bring back some more slaves, fights would break out. There were some slaves that literally just jumped overboard. They said, I'm not doing this. And also keep in mind, they didn't know where they were going. They were in Africa. All of a sudden, you have someone t putting you, chaining you, putting you on a ship like a can of sardines, and you don't know where you're going. Now, down the line, there are probably rumors of what was happening because they would notice that people who was taken, they never came back. Okay? So keep in mind, they did not know where they were going, but they knew that they probably was not going to come back. So imagine the fear that you have of someone taking you from your country, from your home, from your land. So there were a lot of fights that I told you before, and I'm gonna tell you again, these men were not punks. They did not just sit there and just let it happen. They actually did fight back. So many African people died in route on slave ships all the way from Africa to the Americas. Africans who probably were, were notoriously brutal passage as the Atlantic crossing was known, reached the Americas barely alive. If they were too ill, they were left to die on the shore. They were sold like animals on a public auction block. They were naked or in rags, weakened. Imagine, this, is what, this is what it looked look like, in other words, right here. This is what a lot of them would look like by the time they got here, because remember, they, it took months to get here. They did not travel across the street. They took a long time to go from a continent to Africa to the continent of North America. That was not a quick journey. And I've already showed you what it looked like when they were on the ships. The, the uh, slave catchers did not feed them well. They're very malnourished. And when you are malnourished, this is what you begin to look like. So they started out as very stocky men, boys, girls, women. And by the time they would get there, a lot of them were sick or they were very ill looking. Okay. But also think about the emotional toll on them. Think about what was going on in their minds. 
So there was a triangular trade between Britain, Africa, the Caribbean. This was the, what was called the triangular trade. Now, I want you to pay attention to something. Trade goods were carried to Africa for slaves, meaning slaves were considered what? Slaves were considered property. They were traded for things like sugar, rum, rice, coffee, tobacco, cotton, guns, pots, silk, glassware, manila. They were traded. So they would go, these, here's my, my circle, my cycle. They would go, they would drop off different trade goods. They would pick up the slaves in Africa and bring them back over to the Americas. So they had this triangular trade. And keep in mind, these slaves were considered property. A slave was no better than a rice or coffee because it was considered a trade. It was considered, I give you this if you give me this. That's what it was considered. So something came to mind when I thought about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. I guess they got married, what, two, three years ago? It dawned on me that this is very significant. The royal wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. I want you to give you a little wait time. I want you to think why this marriage is so significant. No, it's not because they're interracial marriage. That's nothing new in 2020, or even when they got married a couple years ago. That that's not what's significant. Think about this. Megan's mom is black. Her dad is white. Remember that Great Britain is part of that triangular trade. Great Britain is where slavery began when they sent them over to Africa to pick up slaves to work in the Americas to have more resources to take back to Great Britain. So I need you to make sure you get this. Great Britain helped to begin the slave trade, meaning her mother is an, is an ancestor. Ancestors were one of the slaves. I'm going to say that again. Her mother is one of the ancestors of the slaves. Her mother is one of the ones that his father, his ancestors, gotten to start slavery. Don't let that get lost on you. Meghan Markle and Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Sussex, in January 20th is when they said we don't want to do this anymore. So they gave up their titles January 20th of this year. However, that does not negate the fact that she became a princess in the same country that her mother's ancestor were slaves. I'm going to that sink in for you. I'm going to drop the mic right there. So here's the aftermath of slavery. It cannot be calculated. They destroyed a magnificent civilization. Africans are proud people. There are kings and queens in Africa. They destroyed a magnificent civilization. They broke up families all the time. The massive depopulation, meaning they took people from that continent and brought them over to North America. They forced impoverishment, simply meaning they forced being poor. They forced not having enough to eat. There were famine, there was starvation. They ravaged the environment which had been so conducive to human civilization. Keyword, human. Human civilization. They went to a continent, took people, they're not taking these people and marching them off to a fairyland. They're not going to Disney World. They're going to become slaves in a country that is not theirs. They brought these people over in chains. They were not brought over freely. From open, educated, prosperous, and democratic societies, African people now lived in sheer terror. 
never knowing when their village or town would be raided by human loot by white invaders. They had slave auctions. And I wish we were in class when we did this because you would get a very good visual, but obviously we're not in class, so I can't show you what I'm talking about. Slaves auctioning is similar like um, livestock. Livestock with animals. So the same way that they would auction off animals, it's the same way they auction off slaves. We have a female here. And you would always have someone black that would help out with the slave owners. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's very annoying. They were inspected by potential buyers. They're looking at their teeth. They're looking at their body. They're trying to see. They're looking in their ears. They're trying to see what kind of slave would this slave make. Can I put this slave in the field? Or would this slave work in my house? If I had enough house slaves, I'm looking for field slaves. If I had enough field slaves, I need a house slave. I'm looking for more house slaves. Do I need somebody who can be a musician? Do I need somebody who can tend to my livestock, work the, work the cows, work the chickens, etc.? What exactly do I need? So they would take the slave and they would inspect the slave for what they needed. They would auction the slave. We have a feet mother and their child. They may keep them together. They may not. Now, I'm noticing some musical instruments. Why do you think they have these musical instruments? Because these, and you notice that these are men. These men saw this as entertainment. So they would have previously uh, gotten slaves to play music so they could be entertained. They had grab and go auctions, and it's just what the word says. Grab a slave, pay for them, and go. The grab and go auctions are all people who wanted to buy a slave on the day of the auction auction would pay the trader an agreed amount of money. The trader would then give them a ticket for each slave that they had bought. You would think they were going to the movies. At the sound of the drum roll, once again, we have the instruments. The door to the slave pen would be open and all the buyers could rush in, grab a slave that they wanted. The buyers then checked their slaves, but took the ticket and gave the slave to the owner who matched the ticket. So it was called the grab and go auction. Y'all, this is asinine. We have a family. We have a group of slaves. Husbands, wives, and families, they were sold to different purchase. It didn't matter how they got them. And I need you to make sure you see this. This is a baby. This is a mother pleading with this slave owner about her child. This very well could be her children as well. They have a great bargain sell of Negroes. Now, under it says horses and cattle and other property. I'm going to say this again. They saw the slaves as property. They have them in the same category as horses, which is an animal, cattle, which is an animal, and other property. They sold them alongside animals. This is how they saw them. They did not see them as people. These are flyers that will be sent out to be sold and let by the public auction on Monday, May 18, 29. Slaves. So this is how the other plantations knew an auction would be coming up. These flyers would be sent out. But they didn't have Twitter. They didn't have Facebook. They didn't have Instagram. They didn't have cell phones. They didn't have the news. They didn't have a newspaper. They would send out flyers to let them know it was going to have a slave auction. So here's an example of one just arrived. So over from North Amer Africa to North America, some slaves just got brought in. So we have these slaves coming in that, and they have just arrived that you can choose from. Here's another flyer to be sold a cargo of 94 prime healthy Negroes. People be talking about human beings here. We're talking about people. They tell them what they had, 39 men, 15 boys, 24 women, 16 girls just arrived. They needed the women and children as much as they needed the men. They needed the women and children because they needed the women for a lot of kitchen work, but they needed them to have more babies to continue on their plantation. 
So the women were just important as the men. The women were also in the cotton fields. The children was also in the cotton field. They all worked from can't see in the morning to can't see at night. No one was spared. Even the house slaves, they still, they had a little easier, but not a whole lot easier. They were still considered a slave. Here's another flyer. They had three bucks. What do you think a buck is? A buck is a male, age 20 to 26, strong, able body. So saying he can probably work in your field. What do you think a winch is? A winch is a female. Her name was Sally. She probably went in the uh, kitchen because they said she's an excellent cook, age 42. They had another female named Lizzie. She was 23. She had a pickaninny. What's a pickaninny? A pickaninny was a baby. So they're telling you that she has a 23. She's 23 years old. She has six months old. However, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to sell them together. They had another buck. He's 52. He's a kennel man. I mean, he worked well with the dogs outside with the animals. They had 17 more bucks from 12 to 20. So they told in some of the flyers whether it was male or female and what kind of condition they were in. And I'm going to remind you, we're talking about people. We're not talking about cattle. We're talking about people. Here's another example of a slave auction. We have a family, Negroes for sale. And you notice it's going to be white men that's in the slave auction. That's who's doing the buying and selling. Their wives were at home. We have a mother pleading for her child. We see here money. Money has been exchanged. So she no longer has her child. Once again, remember, they looked at their eyes. They looked at their teeth. He's not smiling because he's happy. They're looking at their teeth. They're looking to see what kind of man he's going to make. What do I want him to do? What is he built for? Look at his body. You can already see he's probably been beaten. And I remind you, he's also in chains. These are waiting to be observed. We have mothers again. She's in chains. We have two children, probably siblings, that's been traded to a different plantation. They're not going to be together. Fifth graders, who do you think these shackles are for? I'm going to leave that right there. You need to think about who those shackles were for. Go to Ed Puzzle, pause this video, and look at the Atlantic slave trade. Pause the video and then come back. What did you see? What do you know? And what do you wonder? Now, there's a history of spirituals. One thing about the African American community is spiritual, it's song, it's music, it's rhythm, it's dance. That's in our seemingly in our DNA. That's something that we know. We hear a song and it gets into our soul, into our being. Spirituals are very, very important, important with the slaves. Spirituals are coded songs. They had codes. The first enslaved spirituals related to escaping to a free country. So if you hear the word home in a spiritual, a home is simply a safe place where everyone can be free. Sometimes that meant heaven. Sometimes that meant to go up north. If you hear a song about a chariot or a train, those were coded for, we're going to escape to go to a free country, meaning we're going to escape to go north. Go to this video in Ed Puzzle, and these people are going to tell you some things about the Negro spirituals. 
and then come back to this video. Now, Negro spirituals and work songs, remember, they work so you can't see in the morning and can't see at night. They worked in the field. You can often hear them singing songs, but these songs have meaning to them. Some of the songs y'all listen to, like work, 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 that does not make sense to me. But anyway, I digress again. Their songs had meaning to them. They were not calling females out of their name. They were not calling men out of their name. They had, they made some sense. They, they really did. During slavery and afterwards, workers were allowed to sing songs during their working time, which is all the time. This was the case when they had to coordinate the efforts for hauling a fallen tree or heavy load. It's kind of like a, like a chain gang. For example, prisoners used to sing a chain gang song when they worked on the road or some construction. But some drivers also allow slaves to sing quiet songs if they were not apparently against the slaves holder. So when they were riding around in their horse and carriage, who was doing the driving? A duh, the slave was doing the driving. So they would allow them to sing songs quietly if the, the, the white uh, slave owner did not think it was against the slave master. Well, the slave was smaller than the slave owner. Because what he didn't know was a lot of songs that they sang were coded, telling people we're going to escape. Such songs could be sung either by one or several of the slaves. They were used to express personal feelings or they wanted to cheer each other up. Now, Negro spirituals and the Underground Railroad, surely by now you have been taught about the Underground Railroad. It was not a railroad. Okay, it's not something you get on a train. That's not what it was talking about. The Underground Railroad helped slaves to run to a free country. A fugitive could use several ways. First, they could walk at night, use hand lights and the moonlight. When needed, they walked or they waited. Hmm, that song weighed in the water. They waited in the water so the dogs could not smell their tracks. Secondly, they could jump into a chariot, a chariot is a, is a horse and buggy, and they could hide and ride away. When If someone was had a horse and buggy, they would have a load on the back of it. They can get under that load, under blankets or under corn or under potatoes or whatever was on it and hide there. These chariots stopped at some stations, meaning from one plantation to another plantation to maybe the place where they shopped to, to, to do all their trading. But the word could be places where slaves had to go to be taken in charge. So the Negro spirits like wait in the water, the gospel train, swing low, sweet chariot. Those were underground railroad songs. Those songs had codes in them. It told the slave what we're going to do. So she is very good at explaining this. So go to Ed Puzzle. And look this look at this video, Coded Spiritual. She's very good. And then come back to this video. So how does this picture help you to visualize what the lyrics of the spiritual spiritual still away actually mean? So here's the words: still away, still away, still away to Jesus, still away, still away home. I ain't got long to stay here. My Lord, he calls me, he calls me by the thunder. The trumpet sounds within my soul. I ain't got long to stay here. How does this picture help you to visualize what those words mean? Where are they going to steal away to? They're going to steal away to the north. They can't sing a song and say, hey, y'all, we're going to run away. Some of y'all are probably write a rap song. Y'all, we're going to run away. The slave master is going to come and get us. And then what the slave master is going to do? They're going to hear the song. They're going to come and get you. But they did theirs in codes. They're very smart people. So they wrote words like, still away to Jesus. I ain't got, I'm going to, uh, still away, still away home. I ain't got long to stay here. Meaning we're going to try to run away. Okay. How does this a picture helps you to visualize what these words mean. Second verse, I'll go to my second verse. Green trees are bending. Poor sinners stand a trembling. The trumpet sounds within my soul. I ain't got long to stay here. They're telling them where to go. So this picture is helping them 
to be able to run away. They have the water so they can use the water to keep the dogs off their scent. So this picture helps to visualize what these words mean. I ain't got long to stay here. It's time to try to run away and escape. So here is your assignment. Go to Edmodo and I want you to get this video. The video has questions embedded in it. This is where you're going to get your grade. And it's going to be about the spirituals. You're going to listen to a part and then you're going to tell me what do you think the part of that spiritual is talking about. This is where your grade is coming from. Within this video, they also have different, different images that you can, you know, have by my images. They have different images that you can look at so that you can help to get more understanding of what we're talking about. Then I want you to click on the link. It's in Edmodo. And they're talking about the Underground Railroad, the other plantation, escape, reaching safety, reaching freedom, and tell the story. So this gives you more information about each section. Now, if I have a parent who has uh, grandparents or great grandparents or whatever that had direct knowledge of slavery, please email me and I would like to have a conversation with you. Okay? So, you guys, have a great Tuesday. Go to Ed Puzzle and get your work done. And I will see you tomorrow for science.